Bradley, welcome back, mate. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for jumping on with us today. Um, I believe we're going to run through some of the latest features for Helium 10 so our audience can see some uh, little tricks maybe they don't know about yet. So I'm going to just throw it straight over to you, if you don't mind. Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, we've got tons and tons of new features. And, and if you guys ever want to go through every single one, like if you look on um, our Helium 10 LinkedIn page or our YouTube page under there's an episode we do once a week called the weekly buzz and it talks about the news in, in Amazon but then towards the end of it there's a section where it's called uh, new features alerts and literally every week we're adding two or three new things and so it's been like a year since I've been on here before so you know we could be <laughs> on here for two hours but if you guys want to look back at every little thing like little filter and little feature make sure to check that out but uh, today I want to talk about some of just the, the major you know tool uh, like overhauls or brand new tools altogether. So if you could uh, throw up my my screen share, uh, I'll get into the first one here. And this one is going to be called a product launch pad. This one's a, a brand new tool. So where you guys can see it is in your menu in the product research, hit product launch pad. And this is basically a tool, uh, by the way, this is for platinum and, and up. So, so anybody with a paying Helium 10 account can use this. It allows you to put all of your like product research projects in, in one. All right. So like, for example, here's one that I started called a coffin makeup shelf. Uh, so what I did, the first thing that I asked you to do is, Hey, put, put the main keywords that you, that you've discovered for this niche here. And you know, I only put like four here, but you guys could put 10, 15, 20, and you're going to be able to see some overviews of the history of Walmart search volume, uh, Amazon search volume, you'll see some some data points like title density and the Amazon brand analytics click share for these keywords. And also as you start writing this or going through this project, put put your notes like here on the, the right hand section because there's gonna be something that's AI uh, involved that this actually is gonna be important for. So like, for example, I was like just doing some research into this coffin makeup shelf niche. And I was like, hey, you know, I see a lot of irrelevant products on page one. Um, and I say, hey, some top ranking coffin makeup shelves have low number of reviews or low star rating. Um, hey, I, I want to include three coffin makeup brush holders as accessories to differentiate. You know, so basically th this is nothing groundbreaking. This is stuff that you normally might do, but this is just helping you organize your projects. All right. So that's the first step. The second step is, all right, put in some of the competitors. All right. So at this is what you should be doing anyways when you're looking for product research, regardless of if you found the product in Helium 10 or you found it in Alibaba or you found some idea in Pinterest or or some other website. Um, whatever the case is, this should be the, the normal steps you take when you're validating. So I just found, you know, like three coffin makeup shelves. I threw it in here and then it's going to give me an overview uh, of that. Like what's the total sales of, of all these products? Uh, what's the history of the sales going back 30 days or I can go back even farther looking back in time. What's the average price uh, of these products? Uh, where are the sellers based in? US, China, uh, Europe, where are they from? What, what about the monthly sales history, the, the rating history, the listing quality score, uh, the one that comes uh, from listing analyzer? Um, what about the BSR history, uh, uh, et cetera? And I can add more. And then again, That's maybe really cool. I have some notes on that. What? Does the just a quick one, Bradley, on the on the monthly revenue is is that like something that will fluctuate each day based on the yes. bestseller ranking yes. or yeah. the, the main one is for the last thirty days, but then if you're trying to look back like ninety days, yes, uh, it, you you might see some fluctuations there. So if you guys are looking for more exact historical uh, sales, that's what our market tracker three hundred and sixty tool is, but I, I only recommend that for like people doing over like five ten million a year because that's yeah. an expensive tool. This one is just based on on BSR an Got estimate. It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then finally, the last step is you're gonna uh, put in some other information here, like for example, how many areas for improvement are there? Uh, maybe you already did some research on suppliers. How many suppliers were you able to find? Um, what was the cost of the product compared to the retail price that you were able to do? Um, what kind of product researcher are you? You know, did you, did you just rely on your gut or are you more uh, data focused? All right. And then with all of that, it's going to use AI 
to kind of like summarize it for you based on right now, this is just the beta version. It's going to be in the future. You're going to be able to enter in all of uh, your own scoring system. Like, Hey, I want to score this higher low right now. We just have a, a set system that it's basing it off of like what our focus group had said, but instead of trying to just figure it out on your own, it's going to take a lot of those data points and say things such as, Hey, there's a decreasing trend. Now you could probably look at that yourself and have, have come to that conclusion, but you would have had to be looking at all the search volume history and, and the sales history and going in. This is just doing it with the click of a button using AI. It, it's going to say, Hey, Amazon is doing much better than Walmart on this product. It's saying, Hey, there, there's, there's a little bit of a share of China, Chinese sellers, which may increase competition. It just gives you this complete, uh, synopsis and it includes your notes here on the right hand side, anything you had put in to kind of give you uh, just a general summary of this project. And so, you know, a lot of us have do like five, 10 product research projects uh, at a time. This just is something that allows us to organize our thoughts and actually get AI to even help us a little bit with our decision making. That's awesome. I mean, I, I remember when I first started this, it was like a mishmash of notepad pen and then excel yeah. and tom you probably do it all in google sheets don't you? you're a big google fanboy but that, that's yeah. so good that you can now summarize absolutely everything and i guess all the data updates as well doesn't it every time you come in and check it uh, yeah and, and, and you could add so. more later like maybe you don't want to do this yet but then three months from now you come back here and add some more competitors and look at the data now like hey is the search volume going up or yeah. has any of these numbers changed so yeah it allows you to keep this here and then it, as you can see it brings in a whole bunch of stuff from a number of tools listing analyzer black box cerebro it's all kind of like into this one tool nice nice i mean you're a man of your word you said before we started recording it you had a lot of sexy updates i'd say that's there the uh, the sexiest <laughs> one i've seen in quite a while so nice one Love it. Love it. All right. Next one is not a new tool, but it, it got a complete overhaul uh, based on what our sellers were asking for. And this is going to be in listing builder. Uh, a lot of this, what I'm going to show is available for like diamond and up accounts. Um, but basically, you know, we've had listing builder for a while already. Even platinum members can use listing builder to write their listing. But the key now is, uh, whoops, I'm skipping to the sex, the sexy part right there. Let's just go to the, the base. <laughs> Um, here, uh, I, I can get my, my keywords score. Like a, we have a complete SEO scoring system. How this tool came about was two things. A lot of customers were asking or helium 10 users were asking us for this, but in addition, I I've always worked on the, um, content team as well here at helium 10. Like we write blogs and things for helium 10. And we used to use this, uh, or we used to, we, we still do use this tool called surfer SEO. And yeah. it's like when we're writing blogs for the company, we're usually trying to rank for certain keywords like sell on Amazon and, and this and that. And we, and we had this cool system where it told us all the main keywords that we want to rank for. And then it would tell us like, Hey, you need to have it X number of times in your listing. And then as I optimize, as I write the blog, I said listing. See, I always think like an Amazon seller. <laughs> As I write the blog, it's like giving me a score, an increase, and then like showing me the score of the competitors who are already ranking in Google for some keyword like Amazon FBA or whatever. And then as I optimize my listing, the score would change and it kind of give me a real time view. And people are like, hey, this is something that we want for Amazon. And so we were like, okay, so let me see if I can find one that actually has keywords in it. Let's see, a lot of people do stuff in my account and they, 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 they mess it all up. Let me just see if I have one that has keywords. Let's take a look here. Nope, that's not one. Hold on just a moment. Let's see if this one has keywords. Nope, that one doesn't have keywords either. This is what happens when everybody's in your account and they <laughs> keep doing these demos and, and and they just like screw up. Are they that tired at Helium 10 with, with allocating accounts? He's like, nah, I just never <laughs> had these. Yeah, and people have screwed up my listing. Like, like people don't realize that, you know, I these are real live accounts sometimes. And so like our sales team or customer service, they'll go in here and just put a bunch of gibberish. I'm like, guys, these are real. Stop screwing up my PPC. You know, <laughs> this they is real like money. Here. This is not support. dummy data, you know. <laughs> they one time actually archived my main keyword coffin shelf in a listing. And I never was able to recover from that. Like it just um, was the kiss of death for that listing. Oh my goodness. Anyways. All right. So here we go. So I, um, I think there's a lot of wrong keywords here too, but th this, this will, 
this will kind of like show you the main thing. Uh, I put in 109 phrases that I wanted to be indexed for, right? And as we know, I don't have to put everything in phrase form, but now uh, we've got this thing called the competitor performance score. This, this is nothing new. This is actually what's always been in Cerebro. It helps you, I mean, for literally five years, we've, we've had this score. A lot of people don't see it, but it tells you, all right, hey, from the competitors you add in, these are the keywords that most of them are ranking for and ranking for highly. That's like what the 10 out of 10s are. So like I can sort this uh, by which are the most important keywords. So first of all, I'm putting in my com I'm putting in my competitors down here. So I put in a whole bunch of coffin shelves that were competitors with me, right? Um, and then now I put in my keyword phrases and here at the top, I can just like before, I can see all of the individual keywords that make up uh, that make up the uh, the phrases here. And then I can actually go, this is something new. I can actually see well, what are the two word phrases that come up here? Mm. Like coffin shelf is in six of these keyword phrases here. Wall uh, decor is only in one. And then same thing, three word roots as well. Um, so anyways, this part is a little bit new, but not too new. Now the part that's uh, new, first of all, semi new since last year, I can write the whole listing with AI. This has been around for like maybe 10 months or so where I can put in the product characteristics and I can say, hey, write a listing persuasive, et cetera. Now where this is really golden is, you know, we all speak English here in this room, but maybe um, we want to sell on Amazon Japan, right? I can use Helium 10 Cerebro in the Amazon Japanese marketplace and I can put all the Japanese keywords in here without even knowing what they mean, but at least I know that, hey, these are the keywords I have to rank for. But then here in the characteristics and target audience and, and, and this and that, I can put English as an English speaker, but then Helium 10 knows that it's gonna be for Amazon Japan. It'll write the listing in Japanese and it's vice versa. Maybe there's somebody in Spain who wants to make a UK listing. Well, they can write in Espanol all of their, their you know description right here, but it'll spit out the um, listing in English. So that's uh, something that's semi new too. All right. So whether I write my listing in AI or I write it just the old fashioned way here, you can see a listing based on all of these keywords. Now we are going to have this complete scoring system here on the bottom left where it's scoring it based on best practices. Now, this is actually something near and dear to me. This took me six months to create. I actually didn't want to just like throw a random you know, set of scoring system. And by the way, guys, spoiler alert, nobody in this world, including me, knows the exact Amazon algorithm. Amazon themselves probably don't even know, you know, they always give different things. So take any scoring systems, including my own here with a grain of salt. But let me just explain to you why I have confidence in it to a certain point. I took, I created like 100, 150 listings over six months, not all on real products, but they were all live listings. I, I made it live. And then I started changing things left and right because you can really kind of infer how optimizing a listing affects the Amazon algorithm based on making even micro changes. You know, like for example, I had a keyword in the title and phrase form. I took it out of phrase form and separated it. What did it affect? Did it have on the ranking? Uh, I had a, a keyword in the title. I added it to the bullet points and I added it to the description. Hey, what difference did it have having it three times versus two times? What difference does it have where it's in different parts in the bu uh, in, in bullet points? Like I literally went through every scenario and, and took notes on how it affected certain rankings and relevancy scores. And that is what this scoring system is based off of. But basically in a nutshell, now I have a score for my listing, 163,298. Uh, I'm gonna go into what goes into that score in a little bit, but now I can see that, hey, out of my competitors, I now have the best listing as far as SEO goes, if based on these keywords, based if these are the main keywords for the listing, I now have the best uh, score here. Uh, and then I could see by competitor what their scores are. Um, if I go into here, I could see what is going into it, like exact match, a plural singular match. That's like a little bit less of a score phrase match means it might, like two word, two words of a three word phrase might be in one part. And then the other word is somewhere separately. It's a little bit lower score, uh, listing broad match means if the keyword is coffin shelf decor, coffin is in the title, 
shelf is in the bullet points, the core is in the description, I still get some credit for it, but the score again is going to be low for mm -hmm. that exact keyword. So, you know, I don't want to go too much into detail here, but just in a nutshell, that is kind of like what is going into this score. And, and is then, your aim to be the number one yeah. then? What, like you've got yeah, there, so, so in this situation, I'm number one based on these keywords and uh, based on the uh, listings. We're, we're pulling in the competitors' listings and we can see how they have optimized their listings. So uh, I'm number one uh, in, in that regard. Are you Bradley, Are you putting in, for the, for the competitors, does Helium know, will it organically put in the top, say, other seven performers or are you, is it from like- I'm, I'm putting in who I want yeah. to be scored against. Right. Cool. Um, I, Helium 10 will, will suggest it. Like if I, I think they would suggest it. Let me, let me just make sure here. Where did that go? Right here, keyword performance rank, add competitors. Yeah, uh, Helium 10 will give me a bunch of suggestions too. And a lot of them know. are correct. Like here's a whole bunch, but I, I personally just, just put in my own ones. Or, or I can import them from Insights dashboard. I can import it from my list like I had in, in Helium 10. I, I just threw in mine the old fashioned way. Nice. Okay. Now, if I wanna go even further, now I can open up these two things, open keyword performance. And down here, now this is where it gets like crazy. Like, I'm like, all right, I saw up here, as you guys can kind of see, it's kind of blurry now. Coffin was in here 15 times, 15 phrases. So I'm like, hey, I wanna, I really wanna dominate this keyword coffin. Any keyword phrase has coffin in it. I wanna see what's going on. So I can hit this filter, all right? And now over here, all of the keywords that had coffin in it, I can see. Do I have it used or not? How many times I have it? Wow, I got six times in my own listing. Uh, I have it exact in my title. I've got it exact in my bullet. And I've got it also in the description. Here's a search volume. Uh, coffin decor, I only have it in field broad in these two places. I don't have it in exact anywhere. As you can see, that's why I don't have a check mark right there, right? So now I can instantly see, man, I don't have coffin cake pan. I don't even know why this keyword is in here, but... <laughs> If, if for some reason I wanted to have it in here, I don't have it at all in my listing. So so I, I might need to do something there. So I, I can look at that detail. The other thing is now I can look at it also compared to my competitors, right? So here's that one keyword coffin shelf. I can see how many times do my competitors have it in their listing and what form. You see like, like this, this T means it's title and it's green in that it's an exact phrase, right? So I can see every single person has it somehow in their title. All right. Um, I can see all of a sudden maybe where there are some gaps in the market instantly, right? For example, let's just say this was an important keyword, curio shelf. I can see no, not one person has it in exact phrase form in their listing. Most of them don't even have it at all. And only one listing has it in like a plural form. So now all of a sudden I'm like, oh shoot, if I put curio shelf in exact phrase match in my listing, I'm gonna be the only one in my competitors that has it in exact phrase match. I mean, again, if this was a, I'm not just gonna do it just because it's on my list, but if, it, if I did deem it a very important keyword and now without having to go one by one to listings, I just know that I'm gonna be the only one really optimized for this keyword and I can see certain gaps or I could look at maybe one person is really, doing well with this keyword, like coffin rug. Somebody's got it in exact phrase match, but nobody else does. And I could kind of infer that he, uh, may maybe he's getting ranked for it. Like he's not ranked for it here, but let's say he was ranked number three and nobody else is ranked. Well, I can be like, oh shoot, he's only got it in exact phrase form in his description. What if I put this in my title? I'm gonna like probably instantly be ranked higher than him. You know, if, if Amazon picks, picks me up for that. So a lot of cool, uh, a lot of cool details uh, here and gives you a lot of visibility that you didn't have. Again, none of this is technically new as in, hopefully this is the way that people have always been doing their listings and trying yeah. to optimize it in this way. You just have now visibility instead of trying to just like wing it. Might like piece it together. You know, just um, yeah. what what exactly is the process to get to this point here? So what kind, what did you do behind the scenes? Was it choosing select competitors or do you kind of yes. plug in your listing? Yes. So that's basically all I, I mean, I, you've got to have keywords, first of all. Yeah. Yeah. So, so do you like, need to you put know, those keywords in yourself? Put the keywords uh, you in yourself. Cerebro, Magna and so yep. on. Wherever mm -hmm. you want, Google, wherever you want, throw them in there and then add the competitors and then that's it. 
everything else is, is going to be done for you. Nice. Next, you're going to tell um, us that AI can then just write the listing yes. for and you. Yes, and so now we have an AI image generator as well here in Listing Builder where I can enter in any image I want. It, it technically works better if it's a white background. And I can be like, hey, I want to make a, a regular image for my my, my main deck, 1600 by 1600. Hey, I, I want to do a A-plus logo image, right? I want to do an A-plus standard image, you know, that, that size. I want to do the a plus three images with text, which is 300 by 300, whatever I want. I put in my main image. Uh, I, I, I put in themes if I want, like I can put the home theme and I can be like, Hey, lush, lush backyard or whatever it is. And then I have 600 characters to write a prompt. Hey, put this, um, coffin shelf on a wall with Gothic decor items around it. You know, here's the scale. I, I don't want to see this, that, and the other thing here. Um, I can use the AWS Bedrock Titan, or I can use Stability AI. And then it's going to, let me see if I have some examples here of images it's, it's made. This is crazy. Yeah, so so here we just put glasses and it, you know, this is 100% AI generated. It's kind of crazy, you know, this this is what it made. So like, I, uh, there was a teapot, I, I think this is the actual product. And then somebody, I, again, people are in my account all the time doing crazy things. I don't know what they're doing. But they, they probably said, hey, I just want to see it with a whole bunch of rustic looking pots and pans. But it's it's pretty it's pretty detailed, as you guys can see here. Let me see what else people have done. <laughs> 15 pages. <laughs> yeah, people have been having fun. What is this? All right, like some spooky, spooky decor. Like this might be good for my coffin shelf, right? Yeah. Or yeah. hey, put some spider webs and, and some some satanic looking, <laughs> uh, weird looking things. Maybe I don't want to do that one here, but it gets pretty detailed. And the, the ones who really get value out of something like this, look at this one here are, are the people who really know how to do prompts, you know, yeah, and me, I'm yeah. not that great at prompts, but if you can really do some good prompts, you are going to be able to, to get some pretty nice images here that again, you can, pr that you can pre make it for your um uh for your a plus content for just a regular image like a like an infographic or a um a, what do you call it lifestyle image right or an amazon post you can make it for there as well and so this is something that hopefully can save some people some time and money when they're trying to do other forms of their uh, images i think what's exciting with this is this will just keep getting better every month well, like AI is progressing so far. Sure. This will keep getting sharper and sharper. But what's the what's the name of this section? Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna test that out after this call. Uh so so just go into Listing Builder, and then at the very top, if you're in any one of your li you don't have, I mean you don't have to like, I don't know why it's like this. Uh, it's not like it's tied to the certain listing, but just click in any listing that you have in yep. Listing Builder, and then just hit Generate AI Images. Nice. Okay. Awesome. I'm gonna try it out. Anyways, that, that, that's, uh, again, just a rough overview of some of the main, uh, things that we've, uh, we've added, but there's, there's tons more. Like we just finally added inventory management for Europe. Like, like we only had inventory management working for Amazon USA. Um, now it's actually working for, uh, the Amazon Europe, including UK marketplaces. Um, so yeah. we got some other things that uh, is on the drawing board as well, but, but yeah, tons of new stuff. Nice. And the most of the features that are kind of up and coming centered around AI and just uh, a good, a good, a good percentage of them. Um, yeah, you know, not say. everything is AI, you know, like we still have a lot of keyword stuff. It's just, you know, regular stuff like, like, like one quick one. Let me just show you guys, uh, that people haven't used, uh, much yet black box. We have a new tool in black box and this has nothing to do with AI. Um, it's called black box brand analytics. So, it takes brand analytics from Seller Central, if you've got brand registry, and then combines them with Helium 10 data points. So I could say, say like, hey, show me a keyword where Amazon brand analytics top three click share was at least 30%, but their conversion share was 60%, meaning they have a crazy conversion rate compared to the others. But uh, Helium 10 search volume is at least 5,000 or something right that, like that. And the trend is this, like, it's combining the Heli the Amazon brand analytics with Helium 10 data points, allowing you to look at those kind of keywords at a level that you've never been able to do in Seller Central. So there's another one. It has nothing to do with AI, but I think pretty cool by itself. Yeah, 100%. Brand analytics has been 
it's, it's pretty amazing the amount of data you can get out of brand analytics now. It's been like one of the best things I think that's been released by Amazon in yes. the last couple really. of years for sure. Awesome. Well, anyway, thank you very much for flying through those. As always, as always, every time I check Helium 10, there's something there's something new. I always wanted to say actually, quick quick announcements, people. We are with the help of Helium 10, we're putting on an event in London in May on May the 9th. There's a link down below. You can grab a ticket. We've only got a few tickets left, but Helium 10 are very kindly uh, partnered with us on it. So we're going to bring some incredible Amazon knowledge to London. And, and, uh, uh, and don't forget Helium 10 swag. So if you like uh, Bradley's top and his hat, there's going to be a chance win. to win those. And also... The one uh, of one be, right here. It's yeah, one of a kind. You need to Bradley own it. And then there'll be prizes as well for like Helium 10 Platinum Plan. And yeah, the guys yeah. have been very kind with the prizes and stuff. So awesome. if you see Tom swanning around with a Helium 10 cap, just know that he stole that from, from the prize. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, Bradley, thanks very much, mate. And we'll, uh, we'll look forward to having you on in the future. Awesome. Sounds great. See you guys later. Cheers.